Our next speaker is Lisa Walker. She is a native of Orange County, California, began her athletic training career in 1993 when she graduated from Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. She has worked as the head athletic trainer at Springville, Utah High School ever since. Lisa's, Lisa was the secretary treasurer of the Utah Athletic Trainers Association from 1998 to 2002, president of the U UATA from 2002 to 2007, president of the Rocky Mountain Athletic Trainers Association from 2007 through 2012, and she is currently serving as the UATA Board of Directors, um, the Sports Medicine Advisory Council for the Utah High School Athletic Association, the NATA Secondary Schools Committee, and Honors and Awards Committee, and the Strategic Planning Committee to Prevent Sudden Death in Secondary School Athletes. During her time with the UATA, she helped produce Advocates of the Student Athlete, an NATA award-winning video in 2000. She was instrumental in passing a law mandating licensure for all athletic trainers in the state of Utah and helped ch champion the concussion legislation. She helped athletic trainers gain recognition as official, as official health care providers, pass mandatory heat acc acclimation for all athletes, pre-participation exams and concussion poli policies for the Utah High School Athletic Activities Association, as well as mandatory CPR and first aid certification for all Utah coaches and through weight management systems for all high school wrestlers. Lisa was named to the RMATA Hall of Fame in 2014 and the Public Advocacy Award winner for the BOC or the Board of Certification, yeah, 2013. She also received the NATA Athletic Trainer Service Award in 2013, the NATA Governmental Affairs Award in 2006, and several other honors within the UATA and the RMATA and other local organizations. Lisa lives in Provo, Utah, where she continues to work as a high school teacher and athletic trainer and serves as a clinical instructor for athletic training students at Brigham Young University while championing, championing for athletic training reform within the Utah State Legislature. Lisa continues to promote safety for the physically active of all ages. Lisa. Can I just get a show of hands? How many of you consider yourselves kind of a veteran in the field? You're like me, you kind of got involved in this and once you get in, you can't get out. How many of you? Okay, so the rest of you that are kind of new to the field, really once you're in, you don't get out. If you're doing it right, you don't get out. Um, the reason I say that is this. Um, you know, I was president of Utah when we went through licensure and uh, gained it back in 2006. And then of course the concussion thing came along and I was president of Rocky Mountain at the time. Well. We've got some new legislation, some things that are taking place. And at one point I said, I think it's great. I'm here to help you, but someone else, you, you need to do it. I mean, I work at the high school and in Utah we have a 45 day legislative session. And the way it works is um, I spend my summers and the off season, you know, meeting with legislators and the lobbyists trying to figure it out. Then I'm in the classroom teaching as well as you know, if you work at a high school, you're kind of the one and only who's there. And then you get a call from your lobbyist, you know, at 10 in the morning who says, hey, I scheduled a meeting for one o'clock. Can you be there? And unless you have a supportive administration, your answer is gonna be no and you're not getting anywhere. So the answer is, well, yeah. And then security comes down, takes over your classroom and off you go. So. Once you get in, you can't get out. I suggested to the legislators, I said, will you help? And they said, are you gonna do it? And I said, well, I'd like this person to take over. And they said, then no. Because you're the face of athletic training in Utah. And when you walk in, they go, oh, what do you want? <laughs> and if somebody else walks in, you gotta educate them on who you are and what you do. So I would say to you, you're in the room and you kind of became a part of it and you're not getting out. 
So take really good notes, um, do the best you can, and then expect to be that person that that's called on. So with that, um, the situation is this. Utah Gains Life Insure in 2006. We did everything we could to write it as absolutely general and vague as we possibly could because we couldn't predict the future. We did a lot of collaborating. I, I had Judy and Denise on speed dial for you know all hours. We're in different time zones. And we had to have this general language. So, you know, kind of with that, the big thing was in Utah, if you're not licensed, you're not an athletic trainer. You can pass the BOC, you can do whatever, but if you don't hold a Utah license, it is illegal to even refer to yourself as an athletic trainer, okay? So with that, here we go. Recently, we had a graduate student come in from another country and they applied for licensure within the state of Utah. Her case was brought before Doppel, that's the Department of Public Licensing, to the Doppel board to discuss if she would qualify. She was basically told, I don't think so. So, they went back and they read. Now, there's no R in front of that 58, so this is statute. In statute, the division shall issue a license to practice as an athletic trainer to an applicant who has obtained a bachelor's or advanced degree from an accredited four-year college or university and meets the minimum athletic training curriculum required established by the board by rule. So I kind of patted myself on the back and said, okay, look, I gave it back to the board by rule when this, when this thing was written. And this kind of goes back to what Denise was saying this morning, minimum requirement. It goes on. Has successfully completed the certification exam administered by the Board of Certification, Inc., or equivalent examination approved, or, again, recognized by the board. So again, we've stuck it back to rules. And three is in good standing with and provides documentation of current certification by the Board of Certification, Inc., or a nationally recognized credentialing agency, again, approved by the board. So with that, they looked at it and they said, well, okay, let's, let's take it back to the board. Let's figure this out. So Doppel takes a look at it, uh, the rules and regulations, and they're like, yeah, we had this issue in the past. And, and the answer was no, probably, we don't think so. Now, again, there's somebody in charge of the board who's paid by the state. And that person, for whatever reason, seems to be this revolving door. So each time you're educating this new person who's getting paid to do the job of regulating, why everybody else who sits in there is primarily, you know, volunteer. They get their little per diem when they show up. But other than that, this revolving door is in charge. So there has to be somebody, you guys, who know the history of everything that's taking place. So Doppel looks into it, they look at the original law, they wanna know what needs to be done. You know, do, do we need to go back and change the statute? Or can this take place in rules and regs? So uh, lucky for me, I've kind of been in the loop from the beginning, I get the notices, hey, we're having a meeting. I don't know if they just forgot to take me off their email list, but I'm happy to have, you know, to be included so that I can plan for it. Um, so I was consulted, you know, Lisa, what was the original intent when this law was written? You know, is this something uh, that should occur or were, was there some reason that this situation was trying to be prevented? Okay, so let's go back to it again. Three times in the qualifications for licensure, it refers back to the board. 
And again, we couldn't predict the future. We didn't really know what is going to happen. I mean, how many of us really thought, hey, entry-level masters is going to occur in 2022? Let's prepare for that. Now we know, but at the time, we just knew that, that we were growing and evolving and that there was all kinds of things that were going to come up, and we didn't really know what they were. So we really wanted to solve the problem without opening the Practice Act, because all of you know when you open the Practice Act, I mean, you might as well just stand there and let them shoot bows and arrows because you are so vulnerable at that point. There's so many unintended consequences when you open up your Practice Act. You can't open it up and just say, hey, I only want to do this. Once you open it, you opened it. So we really needed to stay away from opening that Practice Act. So... The original intent was clear that licensing of this particular applicant and any others really shouldn't be an issue. I mean, let's go back to the board and, and just make it so there's wording in there that when this revolving door moves one more time and a new person comes in, that we don't have this, this issue take place where we have to go through the entire history. So collaboration for how, what are we gonna do within the rules process? So between Doppel and uh, the UATA, Utah Association, and then I got with uh, you know, the BOC here, we said, look, it's, it's very clear that it can happen, but we need to put something in there for the sake of history so that we're not redoing this every time something new comes along. And at that time, um, I was informed about this big collaborative effort and all this recognition was gonna take place. And so we opted once again to go with some really general language and stay away from the specifics. This gal was coming in from Canada. We didn't wanna say, hey, this, you know, if you're in Canada, you can do it. You know, or if you're in Ireland, you can do it. So we looked for some very general wording during this collaborative um, situation. So a simple meeting, it really didn't take us long um, a sentence was added to this section under qualification uh, for licensure. So the R in front shows that it's a rule. So it read the current uh, or the curriculum program standard for accreditation set forth in the standards for accreditation of entry level athletic training education programs, revised June 8, 2006. A question came up, why? And the answer was, by law, we could only go with what was current at the time, and we passed in 2006. Uh, again, published by the Commission on Accreditation of Athletic Training Education, or CATI, which is hereby adopted and incorporated by reference, or a program of education, training, and experience approved by the Board of Certification, Inc., BOC. We have or its successor, because at what point does the BOC's name change? We also had that little experience during licensure. So we tried again to be very, very general in what we did. So if we get back to the basics of you know, athletic training practice language, prevention, prevention is the original act that we wrote needed to be general and needed to give the authority back to that board to establish rule. Because in establishing those rules, in Utah, we have that 45-day session. I mean, some of you that I have talked to have said, seriously, how do you get anything done in 45 days? Right? So we have 45 days if a practice act has to be opened to get something accomplished. When it's accomplished in rules, you got 365 days. So it, it, it's just a lot, uh, it's a lot easier. So with the assessment, problem was brought before the licensing board. If we break it down again into our athletic training language, into that basic, right? You learn this in basic athletic training. Hips, right? We looked at the history. We inspected it really well. We kind of palpated it out. We all got together in the room, went through our special tests. What if, what if, what if? Tried to come up with as many situations as possible. And then at that point, the principle was utilized to come to a conclusion. What was the basic principle that we were trying to cure here? Not was this specific situation, but the principle of the whole thing uh, to come up with the conclusion. So the treatment in this case, we wrote the rule that would allow this applicant as well as others uh, coming in from other places to qualify 
uh, for licensure within the state so that every one of them doesn't have to go back, you know, and, and say, you know, come on, take a look at it and, and ask for an appeal. So rehabilitation, realistically, my thinking is our Practice Act really didn't need rehabilitation. The, the act itself was good. It was rules and regs that just needed a little bit of revision to take place there. So if we get back to the basics, and I thank Shannon for making my presentation look a little better. She did all the little cute pictures for me because I'm not good with that. She came up with this one, and I like it. Problem solving. First off, we identified the problem. Then we had to define really what was the problem. Was it that this one graduate student couldn't get in? Or was the problem that we had to explain ourselves over and over again? So that's how we defined it. We explored what were our options. We took action on that, which in our case, I'm happy to say was, was simple, and then looked back on it. So with any problems that need to be solved, I, th I think this is a good way, a good way to handle it. Um, you know, we've, we've got a couple other issues sitting out there right now. Again, simple solutions. They're having to write some letters and, and things like that. I don't know if any of you have noticed that the way it was written, I told you it had to say that from 2006, it doesn't address those who came in through the internship program. However, they've all been licensed if they applied initially, but now we've got some trying to get it and they can't show a transcript. So the same kind of thing, it, it's, it's solved with what we did. If the BOC recognizes this person as an ATC or equivalent, the state of Utah will do the same. So again, nice general language, uh, kind of keeps the headaches down with the rest of it. So with that, um, thank you for your time and attention and hopefully, uh, hopefully Utah's success story has been of some benefit to you. Thank you. <laughs>